good afternoon and thank you for coming out again and again all for the purpose of keeping our citizens properly informed and guided by the information that the professor of is given. I welcome you to the commencement of operation for the week of 6th April 2020. Managing the pandemic on an advisory basis when necessary. That is expressed in the content of their letter, they wrote and suggested, should in case we would need advice on how they were able to manage the pandemic in China and have flattened the curve. As a matter of fact, China is not experiencing any community transmission. As a matter of fact, most of the transmissions that are very worrisome to China now are those that are being imported into China. They said, paraventure we will seek and will require such assistance through their mother company because of their volume of business in Nigeria and their responsibility as a corporate citizen. They will want to offer that help. Nigeria's uh, on an advisory basis while drawing from the experiences of the Chinese. In no way shall there be case management and interface with patients. They will train our manpower, advise on procedures and methods, install and test the equipment donated before handing them over for our technicians to begin to use them. I therefore use this medium to appeal to our medical professionals to see the positive aspect of this gesture as an extension of development in the field of medicine. The PDF recognizes and respects the competence and the capability of Nigerian doctors and other medical personnel. This is a state of war against the coronavirus and time should not be devoted to and to unhelpful controversies. CCECC, all of you know that they are the ones that are building our railway from Ibadan to Lagos, from Kaduna to, I mean from Abuja to Kaduna, from Ibadan, via Mina, Abuja, Kaduna, and Kano. They are the ones working on the Itape, Ajakuta, right? They have rolling stock and the building of wagons somewhere in Ogun State. And like I said, if you aggregate the total of their business outreaches in Nigeria, it's in excess of $10 billion. And as a responsible corporate citizen, they have offered this. I have a total list of the items. They have chartered a Nigerian aircraft to come and pick those things and bring it so that we can build our capacity in the, in the event that we have a major outbreak and a surge that we need to deal with. As I said, we should devote more time to dealing with the pandemic and avoid any unnecessary controversy that will distract us, misdirect us, and take us off the objective for which we all are bound to fight this pandemic. For these very few remarks, I now invite the Honorable Minister of Health to take the podium and give us updates on development within the last couple of days. Thank you. Over the weekend, we recorded 42 new cases, bringing to a total of 232 the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria. They are in 14 states and the federal and we have 120 patients in Lagos State of April 
2020. We have recorded to detect cases of COVID-19 and treat them to recovery. We have tested over 5,000 samples so far and are working hard to scale up capacity in a targeted approach. The increase in cases with no clear epidemiological definition will mean that there will be a need to discuss changes in our public advisory. This will be after the Ministry of Health and its agencies have sat down to review and analyze the situation. Since the last briefing, we have act activated two additional laboratories for COVID-19 testing at the Defense Reference Laboratory, which is here in Abuja, and at the Biosafety Laboratory Laboratory in Lagos. In the coming month, we intend to expand to more laboratories with capacity to treat COVID-19. We have also identified additional treatment centers uh, in Utaku and uh, Mabushi, which will give us a minimum of 400 beds, and they are presently under renovation and repair. We inspected these sites over the weekend. The Hospital Accreditation Committee, which is led by the Honorable Commissioner of Lagos State and the team from IWA and includes NCDC and uh, Directors of Ministry of Health, has inspected and accredited three centers in Abuja. I will continue with that as time goes on. We are working with Africa Union to develop, with the African Union to de develop a continental response and a joint continental strategy for COVID-19 response has been developed with the African Task Force of Coronavirus to set up and coordinate preparedness and response uh, in a coordinated fashion on the continent. On Friday, I announced that an 18-man team of Chinese medical technical experts is expected in Nigeria uh, with the consignment of globally scarce supplies to augment government efforts and build capacity to contain the outbreak. The equipment includes PPEs and consumables and more than a million uh, masks for workers and even IC ventilators. Many of you read the news, we know that there is global competition for masks and that certain countries have been accusing each other of uh, capturing each other's masks as there has also been a global competition for ventilators uh, with uh, some countries donating ventilators to others and also swapping ventilators. So therefore, it is particularly gratifying that in the face of all of this, we are able to get uh, these supplies here, which even if you had the money, you may not have been able to order. In addition, the technical experts comprise Research doctors, nurses, and tech laboratory technicians with public health managers who will share their own knowledge and skills and their real life experience of fighting COVID 19 with Nigerian experts, Nigerian personnel, to strengthen our management of cases, especially with regard to critical care. As we all know, this country has had quite an experience with it. Now, this initiative will greatly build the capacity of our hard-working and resourceful Nigerian healthcare workers who are at the forefront of fighting the virus. But the most needed TB, uh, personal protective equipment and masks will also protect our frontline workers and mitigate the spread of this uh, uh, disease. We do have a window of opportunity to strengthen uh, and response, uh, strengthen our response mechanism through lessons we learn from any country, any country at all that has had the experience and can provide hands-on demonstration of how to deal with the outbreak and give the Nigerian clinical workforce uh, the opportunity of sharing global best practices. While ensuring that we do not lose uh, gains made in the health sector, we shall continue to support the states in strengthening their preparedness and their response to COVID-19. Rapid response teams have been deployed to many affected states to support their response. Um, yes. 
of the state team. Secondly, that the turnaround time for testing and resorting will be less than 24 hours. This is the case because sometimes samples come in late in the evening and have to be resorted the next day. The third one is we plan to test 200 samples per day in Lagos and 100 samples per day in Abuja by the end of this week. Number four is to isolate patients in less than six hours after they have received a positive result at the state level and we plan to isolate every confirmed case. So we will measure ourselves with uh, percentages on each of these indicators and use that to improve the effectiveness of the response. In addition to case finding, the, most, the second most important thing is contact tracing, i.e. listing all the contacts and making sure we find all of them. This involves a very strenuous effort in sometimes following um, tens of contacts of each individual. There used to be a lot more when the flights were still coming in, but now each case would have about 30 to 40 contacts to follow up. Like you all know, Nigerians are very uh, sociable people, uh, so everyone generally has a lot of contacts, friends, family around them. So this is a very intense activity now going on in every state that has cases, but of course most of this is happening in uh, Lagos and Abuja. Every contact is then followed up for 14 days. Um, to date, about 30% of all our cases have been found through this contact tracing. So it is through the contact tracing that we have found about 30% of all our, our cases. To make this possible, we use an electronic platform we call SOMAS. Uh, this helps us track all the cases, understand who is linked, which contact is linked to what case, and through that we can monitor which contacts are developing symptoms and then continue the chain of transmission from there. Um, this is sometimes limited by phone networks and voice and audio, but we keep pushing hard to make sure we use this as effectively as possible. We've engaged a lot of volunteers to help this work, mostly in Lagos, but some in Abuja as well. Uh, the WHO has helped us with a lot of their expertise. So people working across the country have literally all been withdrawn into supporting this response in Lagos. So in addition to the state level, we have a local government level intensively following up every individual in, uh, in Lagos State. In Abuja, is still organized at the state level because we can still manage the number of cases here. So this is just to give you a flavor of the very hard intensive work that has gone on last week and will continue this week. This is one of the primary reasons Mr. President gave us these two weeks in Lagos and Abuja to strengthen the response. So I really urge all Nigerians to support these activities as they happen, especially uh, friends in Lagos. Uh, when you see the teams arriving, please give them some respect, allow them the space to work and let them do the very difficult task that they're carrying out. Finally, um, I did say we will uh, release a policy on face masks this week. Uh, that policy has almost been completed. In fact, the draft is now being uh, looked at by various colleagues to make sure that we're all aligned. And tomorrow or next, we'll be releasing that uh, policy for all of, all of us to align with uh, together. So I'll, I'll end my update for today then. Thank you, sir. Substantial compliance in these places. We shall prepare a full assessment by the end of the week in order to advise Mr. President on the next step to take before the expiration of the 14 days lockdown. Let me reiterate the fact that these restrictions are not punitive as they are not meant to prevent as they are meant to prevent the escalation of the spread, especially within communities. As you have noticed, the numbers have risen, and this call for extra caution and extra collaboration by the citizens, corporate and religious bodies, as well as community leaders. The awareness must reach both the informed and the uninformed, and it is in our collective 
responsibility. Yesterday, Sunday 5th April 2020, I held a video conference with the governors on the platform of the Nigerian Governor Forum, all in an attempt to create synergy and coordination in our response. I want to seize this opportunity to reiterate my plea for cooperation, collaboration, and openness in information and data sharing, as well as containment and management efforts. Stringent efforts should be made not to stir unnecessary controversies on issues such as status of test results when such issues fall within the remit of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and other public health experts. Since the last briefing on Friday, 3rd April 2020, the graph has changed both globally and domestically. The Honorable Minister of Health, the Director General NCDC, as well as the National Coordinator, will brief you on latest developments. Ladies and gentlemen, our efforts have been receiving commendations and support from different quarters. Last week, the UN Secretary General singled out Nigeria for commendation in her efforts in the control of COVID-19. This is a shot in the arm that will spur us to act better, faster, and much more strategically. Early this morning, the United Nations One COVID-19 Basket Fund for Nigeria was launched in this very hall. The Basket Fund is one of the four initiatives jointly designed by Nigeria and the United Nations family to serve as a financing and investment platform through which financial contributions to the multi-sectoral efforts could be made by private sector and other stakeholders. The basket will stimulate a rapid procurement of equipment and consumables, support social economic intervention of vulnerable groups as well as scaling up efforts on detection, isolation, contact tracing, etc. The national coordinator will give you details of the basket fund initiative. Similarly, over the weekend, the presidential task force received five ambulances through the NMPC and its partners. These vehicles shall be deployed for effective use immediately. One major support that has attracted public commentaries is the offer by CCECC, a Chinese company, to import about 256 equipment and items in different quantities, notable amongst which are 1,300,000 1, medical masks, over 150,000 pieces of assorted protect, the personal protective equipment, as well as 50 medical ventilators. The company has also proposed, and on its own, suggested to sponsor public health experts to help strengthen our public health capacity and advise on processes and procedure. However, I wish to clarify that all the countries of the world are seeking for assistance and are receiving help in the fight against COVID-19. Even the almighty United States is looking for help elsewhere. The support coming from China is a corporate social responsibility initiated by CCECC, a company with a total volume of infrastructural contracts in Nigeria worth over 10 billion naira. The professionals that have been invited or by CCCE through 
their parent company in China to come a public health specialist. Good afternoon and thank you for coming out again and again all for the purpose of keeping our citizens properly informed and guided by the information that the professor has given. I welcome you to the commencement of operation for the week of 6th April 2020. Thanks for live in the Minister of State Petroleum, Tim Priyasabha, the Chairman Presidential Tax Force and COVID-19, plus Mustafa joins the Group Managing Director Meli Kayari on the inspection of a 190 bed isolation centre in Abuja, still under construction. Just last week, the GMT announced an oil and gas industry intervention initiative to combat coronavirus. Initially put at an 11 billion naira intervention and now scaled up to 21 billion, this dome, used severally in the past for big musical gigs, is now to be sacrificed for these desperate times. Our hope is that we will never need this. If you don't come to a situation where we need it, this place will be adequate and available to have 190 patients at any one time. Why that's ongoing? Five ambulances have been delivered already on this occasion to the SGF as part of the many other items built for the fight. And on behalf of the oil industry, on behalf of NFPC, I hereby hand over uh, all the ambulances uh, that uh, we've been able to uh, get put together. Uh, we are still getting more. It's an ongoing effort, as the GMD said. So any other particular contributions that we get will be handed over. And on behalf of the industry, I hand over everything to the chairman of the... <laughs> <laughs> Medical consumables, logistics and inpatient support system, and medical infrastructure are the three thematic areas of the 21 billion intervention led by the state owned corporation, in addition to at least two permanent hospitals and a world class diagnostic center to be built in each of the geopolitical zones in the country. Ono Phillips. <laughs> Hawaii is right to the